One guy who certainly is going to make the roster is Marcus Williams. We know that. Uh, he's been one of the best safeties in the NFL during his three years in the NFL. And something happened that is going to impact Marcus Williams and his future in New Orleans. Today, the Arizona Cardinals have reached an extension with Buda Baker. So Buda Baker now becomes one of the highest paid safeties in the NFL. If you look at his annual compensation at $14.75 million, his is the highest annual contract. Total value of the deal is four years, $59 million. The, the largest deal is Landon Collins, who got a six-year, $84 million contract. And Kevin Byer got a five-year, $70.5 million contract. So total value, Collins and Byer are, are, are bigger. But Buda Baker in the, the annual compensation now has, has the record. Marcus Williams, of course, is entering his fourth season. He will be a free agent after the 2020 season. So the Saints have a decision to make on Marcus Williams. And I know some of you right now always default to the Minneapolis miracle. I get it. I get it. I get why that's the thing that's stuck in your brain as Marcus Williams' defining moment in his time in New Orleans. Because it is the, define, the singular defining moment of his time in New Orleans. The question is, if you're Mickey Loomis, if you're Sean Payton, if you're Kai Harley, and you're thinking of how you're going to piece together this roster and do so financially, in a year where we are going to see a, a salary, a decreased salary cap due to the impact of COVID, something that's probably going to land near the $175 million range, and you have to be very cautious about where you spend money in a lower cap year, how much are you willing to invest in Marcus Williams? How much are you willing to invest in Alvin Kamara and Marshawn Lattimore and Ryan Ramchick? Let's not forget, Lattimore, Ramchick, first-round picks. Their fifth-year option has been exercised, so they're under contract next year no matter what. Uh, obviously, you don't want next year to pass and them to hit free agency, and then you're in a bidding war. But guys like Kamara and guys like Marcus Williams, you have to decide sooner. Now, it's possible that New Orleans could work their cap magic like they've done so many times. And over the years, how we've talked about, there is no su such thing as cap hell because the Saints have found a way to continue kicking the can down the road. They'll restructure contracts. They'll convert salary into signing bonus, pay up front and spread the signing bonus over years. They'll get creative with the way they've done contracts where they'll sign someone like, remember they did this with Nick Fairley. They signed him to like a three-year deal that was void after year one. So that way they could spread the contract over three years, but really only pay him for one. I mean, it's whatever... Whatever you can you can do to manipulate the cap, the Saints have found a way to do that over the years. And I'll be very interested to see if they do the same thing here with Marcus Williams. Now, I want to point something out first before we go any further. Because I know there are going to be some people rolling their eyes, goes, ah, Marcus Williams stinks, let him walk. And part of me, why I wouldn't have gone that far, my first reaction when I saw Buda Baker's contract, Four years, $59 million, uh, $14.75 million per year. I thought, why are we even having this conversation? Like, why would Marcus Williams garner that kind of money? So I said, well, let me just do my due diligence. Like, let me dig and see if this actually holds, holds up. Like, if Marcus Williams is in that category to be paid among the elite uh, safeties in the NFL. Or is he a, a good, not great safety that doesn't even deserve to be in the conversation of this. And another factor to keep in mind is Jamal Adams is going to get paid by Seattle as well. So while Buda Baker just got paid, the Jets traded Jamal Adams to Seattle, and you know Seattle is going to extend him. So Jamal Adams is likely going to reset the market, be it in total value or in you know, your, your annual uh, value. So here's what I found on Williams. And I don't want to throw a ton of numbers out because I know on radio, numbers confuse people. It's hard to follow. But I'm going to do my best to simplify this because I'm going to make a compelling case, what I find to be a compelling case anyway, of why Marcus Williams deserves to be paid among the, the top safeties in the NFL. First of all, Pro Football Focus ranks Marcus Williams fifth in the NFL 
in coverage among safeties. Now, this is among players that played at least 300 snaps last year. And there are 68 safeties that played at least 300 snaps a year ago. Marcus Williams, of those 68, was fifth. Fifth in coverage out of 68 safeties that played at least 300 snaps. So already, you're talking about, in that one metric, among the best in the NFL. Now, you can roll your eyes and say, yeah, Matt, but it's pro football focus. And and I agree with that. I look at pro football focus as one metric amid a very large conversation. I will never look at pro football focus as the be-all, end-all, but it is an interesting metric to keep an eye on, to see what the, the computers and algorithms say about Marcus Williams or about any given player. So pro football focus, Marcus Williams, fifth best safety in coverage among all safeties last year in the NFL that played at least 300 snaps. Which there, there were 68, so fifth out of 68. The flip side of that is, okay, pro football focus is, is fine and good, but he plays a position where we actually have quantitative analysis. Like, we know how many tackles and sacks and interceptions and passes defended that he had. Like, there is a quantitative element. Like, I, I talk about this all the time, like with the ESPYs. We don't need the ESPYs because... There are championships. Like you need award shows for in you know, in in cinema because you don't win championships in movies. That's why they have the Academy. They have the Academy Awards and all that stuff. This is different. I mean, I guess you could hand out an award based on ticket, you know, movie ticket sales or box office award numbers, but that's just not how it works. This is different. Like we have quantitative data to know how good Marcus Williams is compared to the other best safeties in the NFL. So this is what I did. I looked at the four highest paid safeties in the NFL, the guys that are all making $14 million a year or more. So Harrison Smith of the Vikings is making 10 5 Then there's a big jump to Eddie Jackson at 14 6 Buda Baker at 14 7 5 Kevin uh, Byard at 14 one and Landon Collins at 14 So those, those are the four highest, and then in total value, they're backwards. It's Collins, Byard, Baker, and then Jackson. Marcus Williams most favorably compares to Eddie Jackson. When you look at their stat lines, both came into the league in 2017, both have played three years in the NFL, entering their fourth year. One gigantic difference is that Eddie Jackson is 27 years old. Marcus Williams is 23. Marcus Williams is four years younger than Eddie Jackson. Who, who got a four-year, $58 million contract that pays him $14.6 million per year. Marcus Williams is four years younger than Eddie Jackson. They've both played in 46 games. Both, through three seasons, have 10 interceptions. Eddie Jackson has two sacks. Marcus Williams has one. And through three years, Jackson has 184 tackles. Williams has 187. They are, on paper, the same exact player except Marcus Williams is four years younger than Eddie Jackson. Would you like to, like, ask yourself this question. Would you like to have Eddie Jackson on your team? If the answer is yes, then I would say you'd actually prefer Marcus Williams because he's four years younger. He's 23 years old. Now, Landon Collins. I only looked at 2017, 18, 19. Okay, so just to, to compare the total number of statistics over those years. Marcus Williams got 10 interceptions. Landon Collins got two. And Williams has played in four more games than Landon, Landon Collins. Now, Landon Collins has made 317 tackles. He's almost doubled the number of tackles that Marcus Williams made. But they, they're they asked to do different things, obviously. Buda Baker, similar. 323 tackles. But Buda Baker has not intercepted a pass in the last three years. Marcus Williams has intercepted 10. We can focus, hyper-focus on the Minneapolis miracle. And I think what's happened is psychologically for us as we watch the Saints, we remember Marcus Williams had a stellar rookie year. He was incredible. And so much of that, that incredible rookie year, was wiped, you know the saying, a thousand attaboys go down the drain with one O bleep. That's kind of what happened. We wiped away Marcus Williams' amazing rookie year because of the Minneapolis Miracle. And then he did have a sophomore slump 
but last year had a great rebound and was one of the best safeties in the NFL. By whatever metric you, you choose to look at, he was one of the best safeties in the NFL on a defense where they obviously know how to use him, and he compares favorably to a guy in Eddie Jackson who is, you know, the by annual contract, the second highest paid safety in the NFL. Based on this, Marcus Williams' agents, agent is going to have a really compelling argument when he goes and puts this in front of Mickey Loomis to say, my guy deserves to be paid like Eddie Jackson. They're basically the same player, but my guy's four years younger. And he's right. So... That is what the market is going to command for Marcus Williams. The question is, are the Saints going to be willing to pay that? Are this, Because you know that when Ryan Ramchick and Marshawn Lattimore's deals come due and you got to pay them next year at this time, you're going to set the market at corner and at right tackle. Are you going to set the market at safety as well? And you're also going to pay Alvin Kamara? Oh, by the way, DeMario Davis is coming due as well. What do you do with an all-pro linebacker? I'm just saying, y'all, you can't pay everyone. Marcus Williams is going to command money among the top four or five, say, that $14 million per year range. He's going to be in that range. He, he's, he's earned it. He compares to those guys. It's just, are the Saints going to be the team that's willing to pay them? that pay him? Or do the Saints look for an inexpensive replacement in the draft, like we've seen them do time and time again? I was not expecting to have this conversation about Marcus Williams, but it adds up. He's a guy that's going to be paid top dollar and deserves to be t paid top dollar. The only question is, are the Saints the team that's going to pay him top dollar? Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.